This is the Sony A5000, released in 2014 at packed a 20 megapixel APS-C sensor, Wi-Fi, interchangeable lenses, and the ability to output 1080p60 over the HDMI micro connector. And now that prices for used camera equipment have returned to normal-ish, you can pick one up for around 200 bucks. But there's a small problem. If we connect the A5000 to a capture card and power it on, well, we get this nonsense at the bottom of the screen and there's no way to disable it. None. Say I, Frank, I don't know about you, but I think artificial software limitations suck. So let's do something about that. Before we get started, go into setup and make sure your USB connection is set to auto. Now we're going to install some dependencies, Git, pip, and telnet. This should work with most Debian-based systems. Other distributions, you're going to have to modify as needed. I'm looking at you, Arch. We're going to be using this tool to interface with our Sony A5000. Let's get started by cloning the Git repository for that project using Git clone. Once that's done, we can head over to the Sony PMC-ARE directory. From there, we can install additional dependencies using pip. We'll do that with pip install r requirements.txt. Now power on the camera and plug it into your computer. It'll show you that it's connected on the viewfinder. Once that's completed, we can launch the app by running pmca-gui.py. So the first thing we're going to do is click on Get Camera Info. That's going to show you that the camera is connected and ready to receive. Mad. Hacks. Now we're going to go to the Install App tab. We're going to give it that refresh and from the drop-down, select Open Memories Tweak. Now click on Install Selected App. When you see Task Completed Successfully, you can exit the app, unplug the camera, and close the 90s Hacker Music playlist on Spotify. Now, in order for this to work, your camera needs to be on the same network as your PC. We can head into the setup, then over to Wi-Fi, and on page 2, select the access point set. It's going to search for networks. Select your network, enter the password, and click OK. It should now say Registered, followed by your SSID. Now go back to the main menu and select Application, then select Applications List. Now select Open Memories Tweak. Now head all the way over to the Developers tab and enable Telnet, then enable Wi-Fi. Once connected, it's going to display the IP address of the camera. Write that down and keep the camera on since we're about to log into it from our PC. Back on our PC, we're going to use Telnet to log into the camera. Just type Telnet followed by the IP address and press enter. Look at that, we're in. Now we're going to read the overlay value. You can see it's set to 01 and that means it's on. So we're going to change that value to 00. zero. What you guessed it, that's going to be off. And we can confirm that by rerunning our first command. And hey, look at that. It's been changed to 00. zero. Now you can type exit, press enter, log out of the camera. It's also a good idea to go back and disable Telnet while you're at it. But check this out. When we plug the camera back into our capture card, we get a clean 1080p 60 signal over the HDMI. No overlay in sight. Now you probably don't want your camera to shut down during a live stream and you can only delay that for 30 minutes. So what's the solution? This guy. It's a dummy battery. It lets your A5000 run off electric juice straight from the wool holes. You don't even have to do anything special. The camera auto detects the dummy battery and it disables the power safe. Magic. Unfortunately, there's a ton of dummy batteries on Amazon, but this is the only one I know that works simply because it's the one I ordered. Link in the video description. And I know people are going to leave comments asking if another brand of dummy battery works. Probably. I don't know. All I can say is this. Fuck around and find out. This is a cool little hackable camera for the price. It's got a mount for tripods. It's small. It's got this flip-up viewfinder. It's compatible with the Sony E-mount lenses. And now it outputs clean 1080p60 over HDMI. Everything that I needed it for. You know, just a cheap studio camera. And at 200 bucks, if it breaks, something happens to it, I can just go out and buy another one. Really, the only complaint I have is that it doesn't record 1080p60, but it does do 1080i, and you can remove the 30-minute recording limit with the tool that we used earlier. But I didn't buy it for recording, I just thought that's something you should be aware of. And as always, there's going to be a link to our step-by-step -step guide in the description, along with links for everything used in the video. Speaking of links, all these people clicked on one when they decided to become a patron. Get early access to videos, behind the scenes content, access to our Discord, and a whole lot more. Over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. As always, if you have any questions, thoughts, hints, or allegations, leave those in the comments section under the video. But that's it for this one. So until next time, get out there, make something awesome.